in conference report. I haven't watched the TJ video. I probably won't. But, um, yeah, this question of what is God to me is an interesting thing because um, I don't think anybody's really become familiar with it. But my main issue with with the question of does God exist and whatnot and, uh, is that we don't really have a definition. Uh, what are we trying to ask if it exists? You know, I might as well just have a random word, you know. Uh, you know does click clang click clang exist? You know, it's, you have to define a word. And if it was a really familiar sound, but there's no definition to go along with that, then um, you're not really asking a, uh, a very good question. You know, and I, I noticed um, many years ago that, generally speaking, you can put the word I in place of God, you know, God thinks that this kind of person is bad, and it's like, I think that, that's usually what it means, there's not a lot of terms where you can do that other than comically, um, but there are some people that, that um, you know, act against the, the will of God, they think, you know, they're doing wrong, um, so God possibly is an abstraction of authority, um, uh, I, I think in some sense it is an abstraction of the self, but uh, it can be an, an abstraction of authority, of, um, of uh, you know, the, 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 the ruling class, for example, or an individualized personification of that, or a parental authority, or um, you have ancestor worship, you know, it, uh, an abstraction of the ancestors. Um, and this, this would actually go along with it being an abstraction of the ego, because um, because of our shared identity with with these the authorities of these groups when we're willfully uh, submitting to the authority um, as far as the spiritual feeling I think that's entirely separate I think you can have these feelings people are talking about and they're spiritual and powerful but um, you could have that feeling and think that there was a ghost present or aliens were scanning you or you know uh, and I, I think that's different. I think there is a spiritual sense, and uh, who knows how or what it's an abstraction of. But um, you know, I, I advocate, um, you know, looking into a materialist spirituality that's simply based on, a, you know, the starting point of chronicling um, what experiences we were having when we had those kinds of feelings. And, um, and I don't see that there's any necessary connection to, to interpreting it um, as God. I think it's when you have the idea of God, um, you can ascribe that feeling to it, much like, you know, the idea that God is all good things. So just take all your really good feelings and associate those into some sort of abstraction, and that's God. Um, I think this feeling rather is, uh, you know, is to help us to pay attention, just like, you know, we have feelings of hunger. They help us, you know be motivated to seek out food, feelings of love and lust, to procreate and so on. Uh, and so what is the spiritual feeling? Uh, I don't think it's um, uh, the DNA trying to, to make us believe in a, a single um, theistic God. Um, it's related to these phenomena of, of putting uh, material weight in, in, uh, you know, in, uh, in some of our perceptions of wonder. But um, you know, this is how I got my definition of enlightenment. I think that we have those feelings most, um, you know, if I'm allowed to correct for uh, cases that seem like a dysfunctional appearance of this feeling, just like if you have an eating disorder, you can feel hungry and your body isn't really malnourished. Um, you know, you can have a spiritual feeling uh, that isn't really uh, a spiritual moment, can be confusing. Uh, but if I was to try to correct for that, and to see when I really thought that I uh, have had uh, a healthy uh, version of that feeling, or uh, what seems like a healthy version of it has been relayed to me from someone else's experience, that it's really a feeling that gives us a sense of identity that causes us to, to feel identified with something beyond just ourself, um, with other people, with animals in general, or the living, with the biosphere. Um, you know, but that's definitely biased from the fact that the most consistent uh, context that I can put myself in to have those kinds of feelings are nature and the natural wonder and really big vistas. Or like in that walk you had uh, recently, uh, a, a video where you turn around and you say, look at the, the, the light on that mountain, and you kind of were like, wow. 
And to me, that that is the spiritual feeling. I'm not that you had it at that moment, but that's the kind of situation when when I feel that that I'm having these uh, spiritual uh, reaction. Um, it's not really that surprising if you do think about things like hunger and lust. You know, we, our brains, um, take in tons of information and somehow break it down into, into single things, these feelings, which themselves are still complex, but on another hand, have a kind of singular uh, a characteristic. It's, be, it's, it's us taking all of this uh, gestalt of, of what's going around and coming up with, with one answer. And when the one answer is sort of that spiritual wonder feeling, um, I notice it's connecting me with a with the universe or with some part of the universe that's much bigger than myself. So uh, that's kind of my take on it, and um, uh, I think uh, to bring it back to what is God, um, you know, God is just a power trip rhetorical kind of idea, trying to uh, ascribe a lot of wonderful uh, feelings into a single entity if you feel that uh, power might make right is wonderful then the, that those feelings can include feelings of fear and God is sort of an abstraction of that uh, of course Nietzsche would say that um, you know Zoroaster came up with this idea of good and evil you know a unified singular abstraction for everything good which uh, wasn't really how human beings experienced beneficial and uh, non-beneficial things you know throughout history but um, the idea is that when you make an abstraction of things that are good for you versus things that are bad for you or good to or bad to you that um, the human mind can can make uh, personifications and uh, a personification of of this goodness is uh, is what God is and then the incomprehensibility and incoherence of the concept of God uh, maps out to the fact that you know things aren't just good or bad for you. You know, something can uh, can test you and be bad at the time, and later you make good of it. And and so it's it's kind of a false abstraction to say that everything is either good or bad, and it leads to incoherence in that, which uh, ends up being an incoherence in the personification of it. Right, cheers.